Hello and welcome to Alta Sciences podcast dedicated to safety pharmacology. My name is Julie Forget, and I'm the Director of Safety Assessment at Alta Sciences. And today, I am pleased to introduce Jean-Christophe Cudeau, our safety pharmacology expert, to chat about preclinical safety pharmacology. Welcome, JC. Hello, Julie. Happy to be here. Thank you for the invitation to discuss about safety pharmacology today. First and foremost, can you share with our audience what is your background, including work experience and education? Yes, sure. Um, so my background, I did a master in physiology and neuroscience uh, back in France. And I started with another CRO back in France as well. And I worked for multiple CRO in France. And then I had the opportunity to move in the US to continue my career uh, with preclinical CRO as well. And I'm here today. Great. And how did you become interested in safety pharmacology testing? So it's a very good question. Uh, during my last year of master, basically my mentor during my internship was the head of the pharmacology, uh, safety pharmacology and toxicology uh, department in my CRO at that time. And my, um, my project at that time was to work on the cardiovascular assessment from the safety pharmacology to the toxicology. So basically it was to use the same software than in safety pharmacology, but to do that snapshot for the toxicology field. And I learned a lot on that time about toxicology, safety pharmacology, and I become interested by both aspects at the time. Now, let us dive into the safety pharmacology and what it means to our sponsors. First, can you explain why safety pharmacology is so critical in the drug development program? Yes, sure. So the safety pharmacology is an important part of the drug development um, that will help to identify any potential undesirable or adverse properties of the drug. So at the difference of the toxicology studies, we will not use any massive dose level of test article to determine the toxicity. We will look at those level that were determined as non-toxic to evaluate any further effect on the principal um, aspect of the physiology. And basically the difference between studies that can be conducted may also help to understand any mechanism leading to any adverse effects in the future. So what specifically are we evaluating? Is there any specific guidelines that we need to follow? So yes, um, there is two main guidelines that basically would be the S7A and S7B. On both of those guidelines, we have the, um, the primary field that we need to evaluate. The three principal um, physiology aspect that we need to look at would be the cardiovascular, the respiration, and the uh, central nervous system, CNS, that will be guided by the S7A. And then we have the S7B that will focus clearly on the cardiovascular aspect and more on the QT interval, which is the ventricular repolarization of the heart that can lead to any um, heart failure if something happened with that interval. So over the past few months, you've been working on a validation, so validating the combined cardiovascular and respiratory safety pharmacology study design. Uh, the goal was to capture both elements into a single study. Can you describe the benefit of having this type of study on the program? Yeah, so basically, as you know, the two functions for the cardiovascular and the respiration are very related to each other. So basically the goal of to have a combined study would be to identify, if we can, the primary cause of any potential effect that we can see on the cardiovascular aspect or the respiration or both. So for example, if we have two standalone studies, usually the cardiovascular is on large species and the respiration is in rodent. The goal now, uh, and, and it would be very difficult to determine if we have any cardiovascular effect on the large species without any effect on the respiration for the rodent. Uh, it would be very difficult to see if we may have any respiration effect as well in the large species that can lead to any effect on the cardiovascular aspect. With the goal of combining both studies, we'll have the same record, the same data at the same times for the respiration and the cardiovascular. And in that case, it would be a little bit easier. I will not say that 100% of the time we will have the answer, but it would be much easier to correlate any effect that can uh, be potentially related to the test article. And for the benefit of our audience, can you share how's the validation going? Is it ready for prime time? So it's ready for prime time. Uh, the validation is going well. Uh, the 
I would be honest, the most challenging aspect was the calibration for the respiration. It's a new technology for us, um, new surgery. So it was challenging to determine exactly what the calibration need to be. Um, so we work with our partner uh, that developed that technology to go through that aspect. Everything went well. We were able even to do an internal study to determine with three different control articles to evaluate those effects of the positive control and we were able to determine the effect for each of them. So it was a successful study. And yeah, everything is going well. Great, is there any uh, send requirements that we need to be thinking about in advance? So very good question. That new software that we use for the safety pharmacology and the respiration to implement the, the respiration in large species will be SEND compliant. So basically we will be able to extract all the data as per SEND requirement, and we will be able to share that with the FDA. Great, and I think you mentioned that that pilot study focused on dogs. Um, that's the starting point. Um, so why would we be starting with dog as the test system instead of another species? So the dog is the primary species usually for small molecule. Small molecule, pretty much all the time we need to have a full IND package that will include the safety pharmacology. So the dogs was for us the primary species that we needed to focus on it uh, for the small molecule and to be able to um, advise our sponsor and to support our sponsor on those um, kind of IND package. Of course, we need to develop other species for large molecule, for example, for the monkey, but sometimes the small molecule are also applied to monkey because it's the primary species that would be determined. So next step will be to develop the monkey as well. Now that we've been given us the general background of safety pharmacology, what makes this better than the traditional approach of running separate studies and why should sponsors be interested? So if we think about uh, drug development and the ethical part of the drug development, um, the fact to combine two studies will reduce the number of studies, which can be very interesting for the sponsor reduce the number of animals need to be used for any drug development studies and package. And ultimately the cost of the program will be less expensive. So for me, it's a very good approach for the sponsor to think about um, than the regular approach to do separate studies. Which makes sense. Um, so is there anything else about safety pharmacology that you'd like to share with our audience? So yes, so basically we just discussed about the three main um, function of the safety pharmacology, cardiovascular, respiration, and CNS. But based on the class of the compound, or expected effect that we can have with the drug, some supplemental studies need to be performed. So those supplemental studies are also covered by the S7A, the guideline that we discussed earlier. And for example, we need to evaluate the renal function or the gastrointestinal, gastrointestinal function. So those aspects will be led by uh, the drug itself and Basically, we need to have more information about the drug to be able to advise our sponsor of the need. The three R's is definitely a hot topic in the industry. Specifically, the fact that safety pharmacology endpoints can also be added on traditional talk studies, and we've seen it in uh, many times in our industry. Can you elaborate on why a sponsor would benefit from having a separate standalone CV respiratory study? For sure. So you are right. Um, basically, we can combine safety pharmacology and tox studies, and in several cases, that would be a very good approach. For me, for the respiration and the cardiovascular aspect, uh, a standalone study would be more powerful than the combination. For the respiration aspect um, itself, basically on tox studies, the endpoint that we may have would be uh, the frequency of respiration that would be like a clinical observation, which is not recognized by the FDA as a good evaluation. For the blood gas themselves, it's perfect, it's recognized by the S7A and the FDA um, approved that approach. The only thing is that on a tox studies, the blood gas will be like a snapshot. You need to look at a very specific window after the dosing and you may miss any effect. If you go with a standalone study, basically for the cardiovascular and the restoration, you will have 24 hours of record up to 24 or even more if needed after the dosing. So the chance to catch the effect, if we have any effect will be uh, increased. JC, thank you very much for being here to convey your expertise with our audience. And thank you all for listening. If you haven't already, please check out our other podcasts, webinars, and videos at altasciences.com. 
Please also consult our Alta Scientist brochure dedicated to safety pharmacology to get more insight to, uh, on this critical aspect of your program. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at the contact information on your screen. Talk to you soon. Thank you.